eventually I had to have the you know acting bug and the this bug mm -hmm. and the well, it's in now your blood. You're growing up and you see what they're doing. Was he much of an influence on you growing up? My dad? Yes. Oh, my gosh. He's just... Uh, mm -hmm. did you, you, are you Barbara Walters right now? You're going to make me cry. <laughs> 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 no, I really miss him bad. I, yeah. I so wish he was here. Hi, I'm Rob Ward. Welcome to A Word on Wesley. We have a leading lady with us today, and she was a leading lady when she was like two or three years old in a Virginian episode, held in the arms of her father, Trampas, Doug McClure. And I'm talking about the award-winning director, actress, Tawny McClure. Come on in, Tawny. <laughs> Thank you for that lovely yeah. introduction. I appreciate that very, very much. Well, thank you, and I'm glad you're here. She also, I want to know about this, because as I was researching you, you have songs, three songs that you wrote in Terminator. Yes. The classic, the first film. How did that happen? Well, um, I was a recording artist, an RCA recording artist under the name Tawny Kane. But um, yeah, so I wrote a song called You Got Me Burning, and my manager at the time, Bud Carr, he was uh, doing the songs for certain different movies, and Terminator came up. This is actually a really good story. So I, I, I'm like, what movie is the Terminator? Oh, it's starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and this new director, Cameron something, <laughs> Jane. Ah, and I'm like, oh, okay, right, fine. So I go in, and we ha we watch a very, very early screening of the movie without any of the CGI and, and well, some of the CGI and none of the sound effects. And I go in there and I'm looking at this movie and this is a true story. I literally, here's the James Cameron and a bunch of other people in there and I'm sitting next to Bud Carr and I'm watching this movie and after the movie I go, that is the worst movie I ever saw in my whole life. <laughs> and it was because I was young and I, here I grew up with my father, Doug McClure, you would think I would know better, but it looked so raw to me and I wasn't an editor yet, which I became later. I, I just didn't look great to me. So I'm like, he, he says to me, oh God, don't you ever say that. Oh my God, my manager says, you're crazy, it's a great movie. So, you know, months later, I go to the red carpet event, right? I'm going, okay, all right, all right, this is fine. Okay, this is good. All right, sit down. I watched the movie, I could not believe it. I'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I still to this day think it's one of the most amazing movies. And it just goes to show that you don't know what a movie's really gonna be like when it's in its raw stages. And that was one of my first learning curves, curves, curves. I was at Orion at the time, and that budget was $6 million, right. which was not that much back then, but it was still substantial. I'd take $6 million to show any day. It went through the roof. Oh, it, yeah. just, it changed everything for sci-fi films, too, just like Alien did, just like Star Wars did. It was a groundbreaking movie. So the residuals from that, that must I be still good. do get rid of that. But they're not much. You know, it's like anything else. It dwindles and dwindles. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I'm really grateful. And I, I appreciate that you know, that you noticed that. But after the sound and everything like got mm -hmm. into the movie and you hear that, dun, 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 dun. I mean, right? What a brilliant that, director he is now. Oh, and, gosh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you gone to him later or after the movie and said, you know, I, I like it more now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I, you know, but I can't believe it. Now I just told that story and I realized it's going to be seen by everybody. They're going to go, Tawny, you didn't think the movie, oh, well. No, it's, well. It's a learning experience. Well, that's why as a producer, you don't ever want to show the real rough cuts Correct. to people because they don't know what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. They really don't. They say, oh yeah, I've seen rough cuts before. I'll take a look at it. And mm -hmm. then, then here's an example right here. Mm -hmm. You look at it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. when you were very, very young, you were in an episode of your dad's hit show, The Virginian. Yeah, Small Parades. One of a group of orphans. Right. Doug was trying to find homes for a group yes. of orphans and you were one of them. Do you remember much about Which that? Which is, you know, funny, I remember it so well and I was really small, but I really remember it, um, especially if any of you have seen that episode, uh, Small Parades, my dad is singing the song to me, Skip to the Lou, My Darling, or whatever, and it's We're Washing Dishes, but there was this scene prior to that that we, all of us kids were sitting on this on this table and 
everybody was being served these eggs and they were cold. And I remember I interrupted the shot because I was supposed to be eating and I went, is this real? <laughs> the eggs. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I don't know, innocence, uh, I don't know. But I, I remember that, I remember all kinds of different scenes. It's weird, like certain mm -hmm. things just like cement mm -hmm. in your brain, you know? Did you go on location with your dad on other films too? Yeah, like I, I used to, I practically, this sounds bratty, but I'm really grateful. I practically mm -hmm. grew up on the back lots of Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. My dad, you know, was a contracted player for Universal. And I would, <laughs> I had a horse named Tallow and he was boarded there and I'd go and ride the horse all, you know, every time, especially when I'd be during the summer, I'd go and hang out and cause all kinds of trouble. And um, James Jury's, uh, who played the Virginian, his kids were often there too. And often it was uh, Chris Jury and myself and we would be on an, um, adjacent set, riding our horses, galloping in and out, pretending that we were robbing the banks. True story. And then all of a sudden, he'd hear this like gut shouting. He'd be like, Doug McClure's daughter and Chris Dury are, break are causing too much trouble on the other set. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. I enjoyed it a lot, you know. And, you know, eventually I had to have the you know, acting bug and the this bug mm -hmm. and the now Well, it's in your blood. Directing. You're growing up and you see what they're doing. Was he much of an influence on you growing up? My dad? Yes. Oh, my gosh. He's just everything. Mm -hmm. you, you, are you Barbara Walters right now? You're going to make me cry. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really miss him bad. I, yeah. I so wish he was here. Yeah, me too, because he was so much fun. Everybody loved him, too. Yeah. Nobody ever said bad things about Doug, and he just was so friendly and, and so helpful to a lot of people. So that's why I was curious about his influence on you now as a filmmaker, mm. you observing him as a little girl. Yeah, I mean, he was a, um, a handshake kind of a guy, like a good, straightforward guy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of his qualities that I hope I even have a fraction of. Um, and one of the things that really stuck with me, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, we, he did a movie, one of his last movies was low budget thing. Uh, actually, I kind of talked him into it, but it was Riders on the Storm and I had a small part in it. Um, I had horses, um, I'm a real rider, you know, I, I jumper rider, Western rider, everything rider. Um, now I'm a dressage rider, but I had horses that I had been working at, at that would do commercials and this and the other, and a beautiful, big, tall uh, pinto horse. And the per, the director of that wanted the horse to be in the movie. Long story short, so I also wrangled. So I take my horse, go on over to this place in uh, we're shooting in Arizona, and lo the guy was I got an argument with one of the wranglers there. It's kind of a ridiculous story. But he said to me, he says, we don't feed the horses that much, I guess, on Sunday. And I lost my cookies. Like I said, no, this horse has got to get fed. I'm going to, they said, the lot is closed and only they can get this much. No, the horse is on medication. I'm coming over. And I'm like yelling and yelling and yelling. Oh. And the guy did not know who I was. To him, I was just this wrangler that had mm -hmm. a small part in the movie. But I was mad as a hornet. And I see my dad walking towards him and, and the, the wrangler is yelling and he goes over to my dad and I see from a distance and he's like, mm, like that. And because he, 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 I guess he found out my daughter, my, I was his Doug McCoy's daughter. And I'm mad, I'm staring, I'm like, is my dad going to tell me? Mm? And he comes marching over to me and I'm looking at him like, what did he say? And he goes, <laughs> he said, I told him that those are your horses and I taught you to fight your own battles, so he better deal with you. <laughs> and I'll never forget that story. I literally went, hmm, good. <laughs> and of well, course, my horse got fed on Sundays. Of course, I got to come. Good for him. Yeah, good no, but it was you know, his character. Uh, in character, and he was a wrangler before he was yeah. an actor, too, growing up. Yeah, he was literally like, no, she loves those horses. Yeah, he looked good on a horse, too, yeah. and so do you. Thank you. What fascinated you the most about being on set? Everything, really. And you know, when I look back on it now, I loved communicating with everybody, the actors, mm -hmm. the actresses, mm -hmm. um, Belinda Montgomery, and um, a lot of the different people that my father were friends with and had guest roles on the show and different things like that. But funny enough, I actually migrated to the crew I don't, I don't know why. I love to hang out with them and talk to them. And I always like to know how things were being done. Mm -hmm. And you cinematographers out there are going to, you know, it's funny. I used to notice that, you know, when they would have like a great take and they'd take cut 
and back in those days, you know, they say print, and the 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 cinematographer or camera operator would go um, check in the gate, right? When I was a kid, I could have sworn they said chicken in the gate. <laughs> I did, and a chicken in the gate. <laughs> so where do you? I don't know. It's like the way it was. Like you know. your uh, career, though, is is fascinating to me because you were a musician, as we know from the Terminator and those songs, and your other career. But then you became an actress, and you're now an award-winning director, writer. You won awards for the Hugh Hefner documentary. Mm-hmm and for the Betty White documentary. Yeah. Thank you for, re- I feel I'm special. Well, Actually, you are special. Well, I gotta be honest, you know, I mean, just stepping up here, I'm not re- normally nervous, like, cause I've been an entertainer a long time, but to be in the presence of all you all is just like, oof. Yeah. I'm having to bite the side of my lip a little bit, cause I'm honored, but anyways, go ahead. <laughs> well, how nervous do you think I am? Well, it's, 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 li- it's li- maybe less nervous than it is like, wow, you know, cause I'm finally, the fact that I directed a film and it's doing well. I mean, and then Kevin Connor came to uh, the screening, which was um, like really touched my heart. Tell us about that screening. It's an Eric Roberts movie that yes. you wrote and directed. Yes. And it's, it's already won some awards? Uh, 36. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. You know, um, but we were really, really lucky. I had a super crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, my director of photography, Keith Jeffries, knocked it out of the park. And you were, I was, uh, some of you were earlier, you were talking about guests and, and being able to listen to the people that you bring in that have more skills in certain areas. Like um, we had some pretty heavy duty stunts for, um, towards the end of the movie. And Mark Stephen Grove was my stunt coordinator, second unit director. And mm-hmm. um, I literally said to him, I go, I know what it says in the script. I, I, I know, but what can you do? <laughs> and he's like, oh no, we're going to do this. And I'm like, but it was great, you know. That's so, I, how, how long was your shoot? How many days? <laughs> Thirteen days. Okay. For a whole feature film. Well, that's what the TV movies are these days. Right. Th- Thirteen we to fifteen. Two red cameras running all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. We had a really great location. Uh, it was an actual house that had completely burnt out. It was supposed to look like a haunted place, and, mm-hmm. and then we shot out in the desert with drones, which makes a movie. Look, big. makes it look really big. Yeah, and the funny yeah. thing is we had a tiny budget, but using some of those tricks, it really, it really, it really worked. Mm-hmm. The movie has uh, quite a bit of CGI in it, um, uh, which I did. Um, I started uh, editing about 25 years ago, mm-hmm. um, partly because I had produced a film that I was a producer on. Uh, his name, the movie's called Trance. Sorry, actually, I play a part in it and Martin Cove. And we went over budget. So it was a really learning experience for me. And Anytime really... you work with Marty, it's a learning oh, experience. I love Martin Go. No, 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 but it was a good movie. It's just we went way over budget. And I was not a director on it. And now we had to get finishing funds. And I was so frustrated. And I said, you know, next time I do anything, I'm going to learn how to edit. And now, 25 years ago, um, it wasn't like the old days where you have to, you know, cut and paste. And we were doing, we were using... Avid, Final Cut, things mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. And so I became an editor and uh, worked professionally for a bunch of different companies mm-hmm. while I was still acting and doing things like that. And people didn't realize that's what I did. But I started getting hired to um, not only direct, sorry, not only edit, but direct. So I was directing commercials, music videos, short films, educational, corporate stuff. And then one thing just kept leading into the other. Mm-hmm. And then I was writing a lot too. But most of that, I kind of kept under you know, I don't know. I didn't believe in myself, I guess. Hmm. And then the pandemic happened and it was really boring. Mm-hmm. And so I would just write and write and write. My uh, writing partner, Ty Caravelli, uh, I write a lot on my own, but when I do, she's a really great partner to write with. We are writing Return to Shiloh. Oh, yes. The Trampas story. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a whole like sort of a uh, offshoot of what my father's character was in the Virginia. How are you going to get somebody to match his look and charisma? <laughs> I don't know. This, this, you know, this is a, a little ways out. It's in development. We're working mm-hmm. on it. We have some financial interest. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you, you, Tawny, for joining appreciate us Appreciate it. Today. I'm an, it's it's so such good. an honor. Thank you. Good luck on your film. Oh, God. Thank you yeah. so much, Bob. Right. Real Westview. Thank you.